With swords having been used for thousands of years as some of the most deadly weapons available, there are many beautiful, intricate types that are made and forged in fire. The show has already had 7 seasons in the past 5 years, and with this comes an increase in creativity, skill, and design. Number 1. John's Bardiche In what was described by host Will Willis as one of the most difficult challenges on Forge and Fire, the contestants were tasked to make an Eastern European Bardiche. The Bardiche features a large, crescent-shaped axe head that measures nearly 2 feet. What makes it unique is that it's perforated with small holes, making it lighter and easier to cleave through flesh and blood. It was a multi-purpose weapon, as infantry soldiers would balance their muskets on the Bardiche's pole when firing from a distance. They would then also use the axe during melee combat. Contestant John forged his blade out of 5160 steel, including a hickory handle and brass pins. He added a touch of beauty to his blade by hand drawing a dragon design. This turned his weapon into one big piece of art as well. This weapon epitomized the saying, beautiful but deadly. This is because it easily cut through a pig carcass, prompting Doug's iconic saying, it will kill. Number 2. Peter's Crusader Sword This episode featured Peta Schwarzbrut and David Roeder in the final combat. They were tasked with forging a crusader sword, typically of the Middle Ages, and intended primarily for use on horseback. The sword has a very long 28 to 31 inch blade with double edges and a hilt. Peter, with 22 years of experience and a full-time blacksmith, forged a heavy sword which easily passed Mercaida's kill test. Dave forged 5160 steel and created a walnut handle with a deerskin hide. Merkaida described it as having beautiful thrusting capability. The two blades were tested by a rider on horseback with a horse at full gallop. A ballistic dummy clothed in medieval garb and cloth armor was the target for both swords. This ultimately proved that they were both sharp for thrusting and cutting. Both weapons were tested for strength and a mechanical device. Ultimately, Peter's sword won the competition due to its superior performance and artistic construction. Number 3. Jamie's Roman Gladius The Roman Gladius was the primary weapon of the Roman Legionnaire. For over a thousand years, it was the weapon which dominated on Roman battlefields. The two finalists, Jamie and Marqueo, were charged with creating their own versions of the blade. Jamie, a full-time bladesmith with 15 years of experience, set out to produce the most beautiful blade possible, featuring Damascus steel. He hand-carved the hilt and engraved it with the words, Fortune favors the bold, in Latin. He used olive wood as part of the handle components, which added a historically authentic quality to his sword. Marqueo, a full-time bladesmith with five years of experience, created a stunning sword with strong lines and a sturdy, geometric handle. He incorporated 675 layers of steel during the forging process. Both forged weapons were tested on ballistic dummies dressed in Roman gladiator garb and helmets. Both weapons also passed the cut and kill tests, but ultimately, Jamie's weapon provided to be the better of the two. Therefore, he won the competition. David Baker even told Jamie that his Roman Gladius was one of the most beautifully forged ones he had ever seen. Number 4. Mace's Morocris the Morocris is a formidable weapon designed primarily for slicing and chopping. The ancient double-edged sword originated in East Java, but was and still continues to be used widely throughout Southeast Asia. The blade is wavy, meant to create a wider wound during combat in order to cause the victim to quickly bleed to death. In one episode, contestants Mace and Murray were tasked with making their own versions of the Morocris. Mace created an astonishingly beautiful weapon inspired by the spirit of the tiger. He added stripes and a tiger tooth, filed handsome edges on his blade, created a stunning handle, and forged his Morocris entirely by hand. He developed a beautiful blade design using 23 layers of steel, all forged by hand. Mace's magnificent blade ultimately won this episode of the competition. Yes, sir.
Number 5. Brandon's Grim Reaper Scythe In a special themed episode, the top two contestants were tasked with recreating a bubonic era tool turned weapon, the Grim Reaper Scythe. While the scythe was originally meant to be used as a farm instrument to reap large amounts of crops, it is fitting that it soon became synonymous with death, since he is the Reaper of Souls. Rebellious peasants commonly use their scythes as deadly weapons, leading to the pop culture adaptation of the farm tool as a murder machine. The contestants had to forge a scythe with a 24 to 26 inch blade, a shaft of 70 to 73 inches, and two handles. Contestant Brandon's scythe stood out for its incredible strength and craftsmanship. He constructed his blade out of premium 1080 steel, made the shaft out of a spiral shaped maple wood, and constructed his handles with Mortensen tenon joints to make them quote, strong as hell. Ultimately, his dedication to strength paid off, as he walked away $10,000 richer. <laughs> Number 6. Ryu's Viking Battle Axe In Season 1, Episode 3, the final two challengers were asked to make a traditional Viking battle axe. Originating from Scandinavia, the battle axe was often made with a lot of bulky, multi-layered steel, helping to make it sturdy. Ultimately, it was Ryu Lim who rose to the top of the challengers with his version of the Viking battle axe. His win was all the more surprising because Ryu's home forge was made almost entirely of makeshift tools and equipment that he made himself. In fact, one piece of equipment required cooling with a hairdryer which Ryu held by hand. Ryu's spirit of stubborn determination to craft the best possible weapon, regardless of the difficulty, led him to create one fierce weapon, capable of splitting skulls. This is despite admittedly not being the nicest looking weapon. Number 7. Ted's Tabar with origins from Persia, India, and Armenia, the Tabar is a traditional battle axe entirely made of steel. While an all-steel weapon can definitely be an advantage on the battlefield, it caused some construction challenges for our foragers. Ultimately, winner Ted Thompson was able to make an axe head out of an 8 pound sledgehammer head, admitting that he wanted to chop a car in half with it. During the strength test, his Tabar left a strong crease in his shield, yet the axe maintained its straightness, showcasing the advantages of the all-steel construction. During the strength test, his tabar left a strong crease in the shield, yet the axe maintained its straightness, showcasing the advantages of the all-steel construction of the tabar. Number 8 David's Qatar. David Goldberg, a full-time bladesmith with 20 years of experience, won this challenge. He drew on his extensive training and knowledge of Japanese philosophy to create a beautiful two-handed push dagger known as the Qatar. Throughout the challenge, David used his ability to focus on the task at hand. Additionally, he was complimented on his practice of putting forth the best effort to result in the highest achievement possible. David's weapon featured a beautiful blade with swirls in the metal and a handsome hilt. It cut cleanly through two pieces of metal and successfully passed every test required as the judges used it to disembowel and effectively execute the required kill cuts. This proves that this is one beautiful but deadly weapon. I'm hopeful. My blade will cut through the chainmail. Number 9. Washington's Kolishmar. The Kolishmar, a popular dueling sword, became an iconic presidential weapon thanks to its role as George Washington's favorite. And it's not hard to see why. The Kolishmar featured a unique trifold design that tapers into a precise point. This allows for thrusting and stabbing in attacks. The extremely broad forte gives the blade ample strength, all while featuring intricate and beautiful elements such as a perforated and decorated oval guard and pommel. Contestant Josh forged his Kalishmar out of 5160 in mild steel. As well as this, he also improvised a rifle barrel for the pommel. Josh managed to maintain the beauty and intricacy of the Kalishmar, all while also ensuring that his blade was sharp enough to kill. This resulted in a weapon that even George Washington would be proud of.
Number 10, Eric and Jared's Hungamunga. One of the strangest shaped weapons on the show, the Hungamunga is a hybrid between a sword, boomerang, chakaram, and battle axe. This crazy unique weapon originated in Central Africa. According to the two finalists, Jared Williams and Eric Leong, the Hungamunga was challenging to make. This is due to its unique shape and needing four points instead of one. This certifies that this weapon is a one-hit kill. It's amazing because for one thing, it's one piece construction. When I use it on the sharpness test, all the edges that he has that we tested on cut nicely. Overall, I think he did a great job. Thank you everyone for tuning into Film Trip. Don't forget to leave a like, press subscribe, and comment below if you agree Special or disagree. Helps to hook and gut whatever the target is.